That's where the deck's going to be. Kind of see that green area? Uh -huh. I don't know if you saw the picture I drew, but I can get one. If, but where this ends is where the deck will start, and in a whole corner, that AC unit's going to get moved. So again, you know, and I know you know this, but, but I just have to say it for the record. You know, this isn't, do we like James, do we like the neighbor, do we like Kevin, you know, how much does everyone just like me? It has nothing to do with any of that stuff. What this has to do with is simply this, and this is statutory, and it's, it's your requirement. It's not do you want it, you have to determine, and, and I'm reading right from the law here, the benefit to the applicant if the variance is granted, weighed against the detriment to the health, safety, welfare of the neighborhood or community. And then there's five criteria that help you figure that out. That is often called the balancing test. So what is the benefit to the applicant? What is the detriment to the health, safety, welfare of the community? Which one's bigger? And that's how you have to do it. And again, it's, it's not who you like or what you think should be there. It's that simple test. Now, the benefit we've explained, okay? The benefit is that he is able to be insulated from a building that, frankly, we don't, a property that really isn't kept that well in our opinion but that is right up against our property line and he's able to get a buffer from that so that is the benefit to him it also helps with the traffic issues um, and so clearly we have his benefit so it's not difficult to define what his benefit is he's asking for the variance and again we're talking about you know a few feet and it's just real quick this this will explain to you why this is such a, a necessary thing if you look at the back of this building here, where that fence would go, um, I did this cutaway, it's three dimensional, sometimes you can tricks with your eyes a little bit. But you can see on, on the back there that you can see, you'll see there's stairs. And this is the building right here. Oh, okay. So this would be kind of like if you looked at that gray part as being the building, okay? And then you have the stairs that are coming right here. And then what we're doing, this is where the door, oh, I'll get it here for you. So here's where the one door is on the one building, and there's where the stairs are to be there, and that's what you want to do. There's an old cellar doors that we're going to, we want to take out. They're not safe. And then the reason I did this is you can't really do it on the drawing to see, is these this is going to be a ramp. There's not going to be stairs there. Because there's never been handicap accessibility to this building ever. So that's something else that we plan on doing the first time you're going to actually have handicap accessibility to that. This here, the reason there's no railing there, because that's where the fence is. So the fence is going to work as, and that's why the fence actually comes here and goes here. That's why that little jog is there. So that's the next spot that we're going to be doing is tearing this all, that whole backside and start doing. I'd rather do the front, but this is where the criteria, I'm, I'm trying to do this part first. That's where the ramp's going to go. And if you go over there, you'll see two steel poles in the ground. I don't know if you can see them here, but there's, you'll see this is the septic system that sits there. So we actually, the, the deck's going to be over here. It doesn't cover the septic system. But the ramp is now you would have a ramp to come in to bring to, for delivery, but also that ramp can now be used as accessibility for handicapped to come up, go down, and they can go into this door. Because this would be the back entrance to the building. This here would be for the business, the large business that was there. And now you have a sitting area, um, a deck area that's going to be there, which is about uh, 19 by 19. So that's, and that's where the fence would be, would go right across here. That's why that fence on that area is a little bit higher. It comes down, then you see from this point on for 80 feet is the flower box. Then you have a fence that's a little bit higher in the back side, and that's so that dumpster cannot be seen. And then we want to continue to bring that fence. It would drop down once you get 15 feet from the end. But then this dumpster will not be seen because now you'll have fencing that goes three sides and a gate in the front of it. And we would obviously invite you all, if you haven't been over the edge, just to walk over, stand up, look over, and you'll, you'll hopefully understand why we want this. So we've described to you what, our, what the benefit is to the applicant. Now, during the public hearing, people can come up and say what the detriment is. But again, it has to be the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community or neighborhood. From having a fence that, instead of being this high, it's this high. Okay? That, that's what we're talking about. So. When, when Kevin comes up here and says the world's going to come to an end, remember, that's the answer. The question is, what happens when the fence goes from this height to this height? That's all we're asking for. So that's very important. Um, there are five uh, criteria that help you come up with that, that balancing okay. test. The first is whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood. So will a few inches more on this fence change the character of the neighborhood? You have to make that determination. The second. 
is whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other feasible method. The only way that we can control what it looks like next door is to buy next door, it's not for sale. We don't have a feasible alternative to, to this. And I do also want to add too that the gentleman next door's fence on the other side is taller than six foot. I am six foot on the dot, I stood up and it's, it's taller than I am. So <laughs> it's hard to say that we're gonna change the character of the neighborhood when you already have a fence like that right over there. Um, the third is whether the requested area variance is substantial. Again, going from this high to this high. We don't believe that's substantial. The fourth is whether this will create an adverse environmental impact. No. The fifth is whether the alleged hardship is self-created. It's not self-created. It was created by the fact, quite frankly, and again, zoning codes sometimes are behind that you don't have a fence permit. If you had a fence permit, it would have had to be permitted. So we didn't create the need for this. We went in a good faith effort, put up the fence. We were told to stop, you know what we did? We stopped. We're seeking a variance. So if you look at that, and again, you're bound by those five criteria, and you don't have to vote yes or no to all of them, they can go back and forth, but the, but the balancing test is the benefit to James in that building versus the detriment to the neighborhood, the health, safety, and welfare. Again, health, safety, welfare of the community. I, 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 I'm curious to see what they say. I don't know how a few more inches on this fence is going to be a detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community. If you find that it's not, then you have to grant it. Yes. Um, another reason, too, for putting up the fence, uh, we did drop it in the back because we just wanted to get something there to finish it, is because we have an emergency um, uh, access. If you go on the side of our building, you're going to see that there's a staircase. Well, that's a second staircase where if, if there's a fire, they can uh, they can get out that way. The problem is, is you have cars that come right up on top of the, the property line. Um, and also, by code, I've been told by the inspectors that if I was, I wanted to turn that, take it off the building, and then just turn it and have the stairs go the other way so there'd be more room, and then we'd have a deck that it could go to and make it more safe. They said, no, you can't do that. Uh, you can't have a staircase if you move it, so you have to leave it attached. So because of some of, of those criteria, now I have to come up with a different plan to, again, make it safe for my tenants to get out uh, safely and also keep the snow. That was another issue. The snow was being piled up when they did the plow. They, they piled right up to the, against the building. And it was up there, and they had we had to ask them to, to move that snow out of there. By having a fence there, is also keeping them from pushing it right up on top of the, uh, the building, and also not giving them emergency access that obviously we would want if there ever was an emergency. Yeah, and, and again, it just you know, hopefully, and I know I'll more to blame than anybody, but just just to hopefully this board can can rise above the emotion and all the history of this thing, and just just see it for what it is. And you have a guy here who is trying to be an entrepreneur, he's trying to do something that's not only good for his own business, but good for the community. It would be great to have that building look good. Nobody else is stepping up. He's got actual plans, he's put a lot of money forth, and he's frankly sick of spending money on a lawyer when he could be spending it on the building. And it would be great if we could just move forward from this. And, uh, and that's what we'd ask for. We would be happy to submit anything else you want and answer any questions at the end. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify that our fourth, you said we have five questions to help us um, guide our decision. And you, the fourth one I just wanted to read word for word because what you said wasn't quite exactly what it is. Would the variant have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood? I think when you read it, you just said environmental. Oh, yes, so I wanted to make sure it sure. was physical too. Well, here, is that the. Um, this is what we were provided with when we go to training. Yeah, well, this is New York State law. And this, this has the, did you say there's like four criteria in there? No, oh, you're talking about the four. I was okay. just clarifying well, the yep, four. Yeah, you're right. We can read the whole thing. It's right there, and I'll, I'll submit it. I just wanted to, yep. so that the people in the audience heard it. So is there a, okay, so let me just, let me just see what Physical so, or environmental. Right. So whether the, I'm sorry. Whether because have, this. Whether it have an adverse this whole factor thing is impact physical. on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood or district. So yeah, you just left out the word physical, and I think that's a pretty that's important. Okay. Well, the first one talks about community. That's what we're looking at. Right, hmm? but it talks about community character. Right, right, right. We're right. certainly not trying to hide anything. I would write a word for. Oh, I just wanted to make sure it was okay. clear to everybody else. Thank you. So what are what something what, you want to mention? There, there was, was one thing up. I think that that needed to be mentioned that was uh, that was not brought up, and that's that there's a fence that Tom Angler put up over four years ago. 
that fence was over eight feet tall. Um, when I asked for my variance a couple of years ago to put an eight foot fence up, I was denied. Um, I then came in here, I foiled and I said, well, can I see uh, what Mr. Angler did? Well, Mr. Angler didn't do anything. He just, he never went to the zoning board like I did. He didn't go to the county meetings like I did. He didn't come to the town and try to get a variance. He just went ahead and put up his eight foot plus fence. Well, when I made that, I said, well, I'd like to see what, what paperwork so I can do the same thing so I can get my variance. And um, so that didn't happen. They said, well, we don't have any paperwork because he never got that variance. So I brought that to the attention of the zoning board. So here they're fighting me, telling me I can't have an eight-foot fence. Um, so I, I said, fine. I put up a six-foot fence. And in other areas, it is a little bit higher because we want to surround a, a dumpster so you don't see it. So we want to be above that. We also want to put a deck up. But here's the interesting part is that they have brought me to court. They have fined me $2,500. They've taken me to Supreme Court because I have this fence. Yeah, they also want to throw me in jail. But at the same time, Tom Angler has a fence that's still over six feet tall, has been that way for four years. He's never been brought, and they said, well, no one complained. Well, somebody did complain. The entire zoning board complained and said there was, a, there was an eight-foot fence there. He cut it down, but he did not cut it down to what they wanted. He just cut it down so he could show that he cut it down. You can go there today. It's still over six foot. He's never been brought in to be fined. He's never gone to, gone in front of a judge. He's never uh, been uh, been harassed. He's never been told that he's going to go to jail if he doesn't take that fence down. And in his case, he should. In his case, because he didn't ask for the variance first, he really has to take his fence down completely, then ask, and then put the fence back up. That hasn't happened. So it just seems in this case that you have one person that has one set of rules, and then you have myself that has a different set of rules. And really what I'm fighting for is equal quality. Everybody should be treated the same. And don't pick and choose who you want to uh, press the law against.